attention, please. It's time for the final countdown. <laughs> the show starts in... Woke up this morning with a praise on my heart I'm feeling happy with love in my thoughts Hi, this is Chosen representing for the Servant David Morning Show God bless, stay tuned This sermon explains key points about the importance and meaning of baptism and provides direction on acceptable ways to administrate it. Brother David asks, how would it have been for you to make this choice if you knew that your life was at stake? Greetings to each one here this morning. We're thankful to be here at this beautiful place, a worship service, a special worship service that we can again be reminded and we can witness a ceremony that is ordained of God. This morning I had to think of a verse and you may think it would not really pertain to this. I had to think of that verse, precious in the sight of God are the death of his saints. Maybe we need to re reword that a little bit. I believe we could safely say, precious in the sight of God is the birth of his saints. I trust that those gathered here, especially the applicants, that they have experienced this before today, and yet I believe they are walking in the newness of life, a beautiful walk, a wonderful walk, a fulfilling walk. I trust that's the way we find it. Even those of us that have uh, maybe made our vows years ago, I trust it's still new to us today. For a opening or for a message this morning, I would like to share a few thoughts of, on baptism. Maybe we could term it this way. Why, when, and how? Before we go further, I know these six, uh, three sisters and three brethren, they have made their choice. My mind went back to uh, our forefathers. How would it have been for you to make your choice today if you would have known it might, have, might be a life and death matter? Back in the time when the Anabaptists made their choice, they didn't know they have uh, day to live, a week to live, or maybe a year, or maybe many years. But they did know, depending who would find out, would take them to prison or end their life. I trust this morning it wouldn't have made a difference in your choice. It's a, it amazes me or it, it challenges me as I think of those forefathers, as we think of their choices and you know, they believed what they did, and yet they attached discipleship to that. I believe that's where the, the difference came in. They were willing to sacrifice 
family. They were willing to sacrifice their material things and even life itself for the cause of Christ. Choices. Maybe I'll just leave it at that. Uh, coming to water baptism, I realize there are three, maybe more baptisms, but there are three especially in believers that need to take place. One is water baptism, another is the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and also the baptism of fire. And I believe maybe the Holy Spirit and the fire baptism could link together, but maybe this morning we want to uh, mostly focus in this message on, on water baptism. If we think of the three baptisms, maybe we should just briefly turn to, to Matthew chapter 3, verse 11. Speaking of here of, of John the Baptist, it says here in verse 11, chapter 3, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Holy Ghost and with fire. I believe that shows us a zeal and indwelling. But maybe we'll just leave it at that and, and uh, let's turn to Matthew 28 verse 19 and 20. Matthew chapter 28. verse 19 and 20. As we are thinking of baptizing this morning, why do we do it? I believe one, one and a good reason, it is a command of God. Verse 19, or maybe we'll just start. Reading. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Beautiful picture of baptizing. It brings out here the, the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. I I believe we can witness that as if... if uh, if we have, uh, if time goes on today. And then it goes on <coughs> teaching them to observe all things. I believe that is where discipleship comes in. And I, I have the confidence that your ministering brethren and your parents and have taught you that, the all things. You know, we, we can't just, uh, you know, have our baptism today and then, you know, forget about it. Life goes on, the discipleship of Christ. If we think of why we baptize, I believe it is a command of God. And if, if, we, if we read that in the Bible, that's what it means. And we can read many other things, you know, to love our brethren, to, to uh, be faithful in our faith and hope and our joy. Command of God, that's what it means. If the Bible states it that way, we do well to obey. Now we we may we want to come to more of that later now we we may think you know this water baptism I don't believe that is salvation in itself and I trust that you have experienced a new birth before today and yet I believe it is all newborn believers sincere desire and goal to be baptized by water as if time allows that should be their goal if they're led by the Holy Spirit, I do not believe a sincere Christian will ever continue on in life and decide, well, I just don't need this because I have the new birth. I believe that is not the will of God. I believe that his Holy Spirit will lead us to, to a water baptism. Also another, there are three gospel requirements, I believe, in baptism that we need to focus on. Number one is faith. 
Let's turn to Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8, verse 36 and 37. Here, here we have a setting of, of, of the you know, I believe we all know the setting here as Philip was preaching to him and as he came to him and helped him to understand what he was reading. And then in verse 37 it says, And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. Excuse me, let's start reading in 36. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water, and the you know, said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? He had faith. I believe that is our question this morning. What doth hinder us? I trust nothing. I believe your, I trust that your life is in order, and, and that is the next step in your Christian life. And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I trust that's our testimony this morning, especially the ones that are participating in, in the instruction class. Also, I believe we need to, to have a focus on repentance. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Acts chapter 2 verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Repentance. There is no way we can experience new life unless we repent. Possibly that's too many trouble. We want to keep on doing the same things we, we are thinking the same things, striving for the same things, and yet we want this new life. Repentance means going the other way. Another, uh, another thought or another point on, on gospel requirements is conversion. And I li I'd like to just think of the conversion of Cornelius in uh, also found in chapter or in, in Acts when when uh, Peter went over to Cornelius, I, I just like the setting of this, the, how God used Peter as a vessel in His hand, and Cornelius was seeking for the truth, and I believe it uh, it started with his seeking for the truth. It it ended up with a smitten conscience, and then worship, enlightenment instructions from a man of God which was Peter. You now if Peter would have would have decided that nothing doing, he's not, he's not going over there to that Gentile, what would have become of this of this uh, searching soul that was searching for the truth? I believe that is something that we must must be open to. You know, us in our in our setting sometimes we, we may just look in our small circles. There are other souls that are longing for help. I trust that we are willing to reach out and help them. Also, let's turn to Matthew chapter 3. I believe it is a, a beautiful example of Christ, what he was willing to do and leave an example for us. Matthew chapter 3 verse 15 Here Jesus was coming to John the Baptist And maybe we'll just start reading in verse 13 Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan And John to be baptized of him But John forbade him saying I have need to be baptized of thee And comest thou to me I believe John was humble To think of him baptizing Jesus Let's notice Jesus answer and Jesus answering and said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh to us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. 
I believe it wasn't because Jesus had a need in his life of, of uh, cleansing or uh, because he had sin in his life. I believe it was an act of obedience. He was willing to do that for an example for us. Also, uh, I believe we need to to look at uh, water baptism as a, a as something that is a seal of someone that is seeking to serve God and is following God, of, and and a seal of a seal or a a uh, token of a changed heart. I believe it is important today that our testimonies ring clear. Our words must be backed by our life of example to be an effective witness. I believe we must remember that. Another thing, as we make our vows and mouth confessions, I believe we should look at Matthew chapter 10, verse 32. Matthew chapter 10, verse 32. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. I believe that is very important that we see the need in that. You now we, we might think we can be a Christian and nobody needs to know it. And I sometimes wonder if the Anabaptists were tempted with that. Yet they had an open life. I believe they were willing to display their new life in Christ that others may see. They were willing to confess him and Jesus was willing to confess them before his Father in heaven. Also another another uh, verse that goes with that is found in Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10 verse 9 and 10. If, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation its connection with our salvation I believe it's something we don't want to hide is our salvation our new life I think we need to see the need of that of, of uh, sharing it with others also I'd, I'd like to for us to remember something today as we make our vows let's remember our faithfulness and sincerity to our commitments and vows today will be the, t the temperature of the church tomorrow our faithfulness and sincerity to our commitments and vows today will determine the temperature of the church tomorrow. And we could put other things there, our homes, our life, our faithfulness to our vows and our commitments to God. It will show up in our life. Sometimes we meet trials. Sometimes we meet differences in, in church life. How we respond will, will be a, a great impact on how the church will function or how the church will be a light and a witness to others. And if we start to be uh, maybe unworkable, things like that, I believe it just comes back to our commitment and discipleship to Christ. <coughs> Also, I'd like to, to share a few thoughts on what baptism is not. As I mentioned earlier, it is, it is not salvation in itself. As we think of Christ being baptized, it wasn't because he had sin. I think, I believe we mentioned that. I'd like to turn to 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 21. 1 Peter 3, 21. The light figure whereunto even baptism doth also now save us. 
not putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Let's notice that. Here in this verse it says, the light figure whereunto even baptism doth also now save us. It gives us a good conscience toward God, but let's notice it, it mentions that, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh. I'd, like, I'd want to be open for correction, but I believe we can safely say that this water that we are pouring today does not wash away the filth of our flesh. It is God, His blood, that cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Let's, let's remember that. Let's remember water baptism is a command of God, and yet that is not what cleanses us from our sins. Important. Also, Romans chapter 1, or maybe we, we can read 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 5, before we go to Romans. Who are kept by the power of God through faith and salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. I believe that is where our answer is. The power of God through faith is where our salvation lies. The power of God Let's remember, the power of God is, is available daily. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God. Again, mentions the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Open for everyone. I love that. We don't have to be a, a Yoder or a Hirschberger or a, a Mennonite. It is to whosoever will may come. I believe it is important that we remember that, that water baptism does not save us. I'd like to read a, a, a portion of something that was written by Peter Jans wish if I pronounce that right if history has it correct he was married to a granddaughter of Menno Simons I'll just read this this outward baptism with water does not properly constitute the entrance to the kingdom of God nor does the visible element of the water contain any power or holiness neither is it able to give any grace and salvation but as the waters of Jordan and Siloam did not heal leprosy and, and blindness. I believe it is speaking of Naaman and uh, when Jesus sent that man to heal his blind eyes at the pool of Siloam. It wasn't the water that healed them but only the power of God. Again bringing out the power of God to which they were herein subject and obedient. So also the water in baptism has no power to forgive our sins and to cleanse the filthiness of our flesh, but it is simply a token and reproof of the grace and the blood of Christ in washing away of sin, which man through faith and regeneration by grace has received in the heart before baptism. Explains it very well. And without this internal baptism with the Holy Ghost and with fire, the external visible water baptism is as useless and vain as a seal of an empty letter. I'd like to make it clear though that it's, you know, it says it's, here this writer mentioned it's as vain as the seal of an empty letter, and yet it is important. I believe, as I mentioned earlier, if we are truly, sin sincerely seeking God with a new birth, we also desire water baptism, and yet that is not what is going to wash away our sins. Also, uh, as we think of water baptism is important to the church. By baptizing the applicant, the church testifies to all that the applicant has given. Biblical evidence of repentance. I believe that is a testimony to others looking on. Another pure soul entering in the gates of the church. I believe church life is that way it's not just something that we can go on a ride for it's something that we contribute to to 
make it work. Also, I believe it is obedience and water baptism is important to the church by baptizing the applicant. And it, it just testifies to God and to those that are looking on of something that is fulfilling, something that is worth living for. A life that that we, we don't focus on self. I'd like to just uh, share a few words on, on when. When are we ready? Water baptism is an outward testimony of a work done in the heart. I had, I had to think of it this way, you know, we, we may have, you know, I don't know what your experience was, but my mind went, went back to my younger days. And I remember the days of trouble and turmoil, of burdened conscience, you know, we tried and we tried and failed and we were just, we were just trying our best and yet we couldn't get nowhere. We were sin sick, we had a burdened conscience, all we had to offer to God was this. You may wonder why I have a dirty rag here. Let's turn to Isaiah. We, if we focus on this, I believe we can see we need help to clean this. We cannot clean our life by ourselves. Let's let's notice what it meant, what it says in Isaiah. Isaiah chapter sixty-four. Isaiah chapter 64, verse 6. But we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags, and we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. Here it mentions our all our righteousnesses, it's plural, are as filthy rags. You know, we try and we try. All we have to offer is this dirty rag. And it's plural there. It seems to me maybe in our human strength, we are trying to do this or that to maybe gain some points by God. That's not how it works. And I've, al I've already told some young people this. I believe maybe in my life I experienced that. Too many times I was trying to get ready to be a Christian. I wanted to be all set, all clean and all, you know, things forgiven, things made right. I believe that is necessary, but I believe what we need to do is come to Jesus. He is waiting for us. He is knocking on the door. It is important that we see that. I believe in my life, I, can, I, I must confess that's what I tried to do, and that's why it didn't work, because I tried too hard to, to uh, do it myself. What God wants us to do is Tell him, here's my life, clean it up. Impossible by ourselves. That's why those rags are still dirty. We need to give them to God. He can cleanse them. Let's also, uh, thought I had written it down. I believe it's in Isaiah somewhere where it mentions uh, about being whiter than snow. Yes, Isaiah chapter one, verse 18. Come now and let us reason together, as saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. That's what God can do to us. If we have experienced that, if our life is clean, then I believe we are ready to be baptized. Our focus changes. I like to say it this way. We focus on mercy instead of my way. We focus on faith instead of fences. You know, too often maybe we think dad and mom, they're, they're strict or the church requires things that I don't see. But we focus on our faith, not on things that we can't do. There's much work to do in the church. Also, we, we focus on grace and not, not on grievances. I believe our focus should be on God, on Christ, on the good of the church and his kingdom. Also, I'd like to just share a, 
a word. I, I believe we meet, we must also baptize those that are mature and accountable. You know, years ago, our forefathers were faced with that. They were baptized as babies. How were they to know that they are a saved Christian? Let's turn to, or, well, maybe we should just turn to Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 6 it mentions all we like sheep have gone astray <coughs> I gleaned that thought somewhere in my studies it mentions here all we like sheep it doesn't mention lambs sheep those that are that understand what they're doing or are old enough to be accountable I believe we are sheep and as we can read in, in uh, Matthew chapter 19, where Jesus was calling the children to them and blesses them, it, I believe it mentions even he put his hand on their head, but it does not mention that he baptized them. I believe we need to understand that we, we need to teach our children to train them. You know, I believe uh, if we, I believe we can safely say this, the applicants here this morning, as, uh, as their parents were training them, this is the fruit of long hours of training and, and uh, a vision of what needs to be done. Is, and that was conducive to the choices they made today or when they accepted Christ. And I realize we can't just uh, depend on our heritage or our training, but I believe that is, goes a long way or a, is a very effective tool in helping our children to see their need if we teach them their needs in life. And the list could go on. I, I think we must move on. I wanted to touch on the mode a little bit yet. Yeah. Uh, I did some studying and reading in, in uh, Martyr's Mirror also, and maybe it was the other article I read of the first baptism in Zurich. I believe maybe it was George Blorock and maybe, I, I'm not sure on it, I, I forgot to bring it along, but I believe it was George Blorock and uh, Felix Mons did maybe baptize them. And they were in a house and they were asked to kneel. And it, and it mentioned, it used a word that I'm not familiar with, I believe it might have been you know, their language, but it was a dipper of some kind. I believe it brought out the fact that they poured. You know, there there may be differences in in some of the Protestant churches. They they immerse, and yet, I believe if we sincerely search the scriptures, if we I came across a, a, a sentence like this, the word immerse is not found in any unbiased translation of the Bible. Also, I'd like to turn to 1 Peter chapter 3. First Peter chapter 3, and we read this verse 21, but if we notice a few verses before that, they were, it, it is speaking of the ark. Maybe we'll just start reading in verse 18. For Christ also hath once suffered for our sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison, which sometimes were dis disobedient, when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was a preparing wherein few, that is, eight souls, were saved by water. <coughs> then it goes on, the verse we read, the light figure, whereunto even baptism doth also now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who is gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God, 
angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. Coming back to this art, it just brought out the thought that, you know, it, it mentions the light figure in verse 21, whereunto even baptism, you know, the, the, the rain and the waters poured down on the ark, it was poured. And it mentioned that, that uh, the disobedient were, were uh, drowned or found destruction in immersion, in, Im in immersion. It just brought out the thought that that the saving of the ark, the ones in the ark was was when the rain was pouring down, but the others that were disobedient lost their lives in the flood. And also, maybe we can turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual drink. Also, I believe here we can make an application of being baptized they went as they passed through the sea on dry land. And it mentions here they were all baptized. And if we go to Psalms chapter 77, I believe it is, verse 17, it mentions how the clouds poured out rain. And it is speaking about this same instance of Moses and the Israelites going through the sea. And the clouds poured out rain upon them in their bat as as it mentions here, were all baptized into Moses. And again, their enemies lost in, in the flood when the waters came together again. I believe I, I just invite you to search the scriptures and, and see what you can find. But I believe we have many things. If we go to the Old Testament, also Moses and did many, many things of sprinkling. We never, I could never find anything that he you know, immerse some something or someone in the blood or the water or the or by the oil, or things like that. So I believe it is a scriptural method of pouring or a fusion, however we want to term it. So I'd like to just encourage you that you would just continue on in your walk in your walk of life as we can read of a verse in uh, maybe we'll just leave it of being called out of darkness into his marvelous light. With those thoughts, uh, let's kneel for prayer. This concludes today's message. We hope this has been a blessing for you.